Bertemu kembali untuk blog ini di akhir awal ini tujuh empat uh, dari bulletin awal ini kami akan memaparkan video yang akan bawa anda untuk melihat krisis iklim perubahan iklim yang berlaku di negara ini dan juga cara yang berkesan untuk menangani perkara ini. Video ini merupakan sebahagian daripada inisiatif yang berterusan iaitu merupakan antara kerjasama antara Kesatuan Eropah EU dan juga Malaysia yang mengangkat tema belajar hidup semula langkah ke arah kelestarian. Kami akan akhiri buletin awani pada jam ini dengan video Is Climate Emergency Real? sempena minggu diplomasi iklim ini. Kita saksikan video ini. The climate emergency is an existential crisis which is informed by science. Slow-moving ecological systems are being affected by human activities. Earth simply cannot support both population growth and economic growth at the same time. Warning about climate change is reaching Malaysian shores. Climate change is giving farmers at Kampung Banggo Petai in Pedang Kedah a headache. The recent flood disaster has highlighted the danger of climate crisis. We are already seeing 1.2 degrees of warming. This is as reported by the United Nations World Meteorological Organization. And there is a more than 50% probability of 1.5 degrees warming in the next few years. And because of that, we're already seeing extreme weather events happening. The thing about the climate is you have to look at the average. So an average over time, uh, it is still getting warmer. And the key as well is the speed in which it's changing. But what we see today is that all these changes are happening uh, within just a few years, within a decade. So it's definitely speeding up faster than it should have been. When people talk about climate change, they will talk about melting ice caps and polar bears not having a place to, to land and all. So that's a bit difficult for us to relate uh, in a tropical country. Malaysia is having more extreme heat waves. And also there's a change in the rainfall as well. And we have more rain in general. And this is why flooding is a very good indicator to show that you know things are really changing here in Malaysia as well. Planet Earth magnificent and full of resources, but increasingly exploited and plundered by humans, has sent out numerous warning signals to us, alerting us of the pains it has been facing. Extreme climate changes, unprecedented weather events, species extinctions, the list goes on. Very generally, what causes climate change is greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. So like we use fossil fuels, we burn coal, um, our petrol. So this is actually putting the bulk of the greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. And on top of that, humans are also cutting down trees. There's deforestation, we also have overfishing, and this reduces the ability of the earth to absorb the carbon and all the other gases that we have put out. We've seen a significant spike in heat waves, floods and droughts, and some coastal areas have been inundated by rising sea levels. The temperature increase and changes in rainfall patterns are also impacting our agriculture, reducing rice yield by up to 31%, threatening not just our economy, but even our food security. Food security is very closely tied to the climate because we are an agricultural society. Um, about 10%, if I'm not mistaken, of our society relies on agriculture. So if anything happens to the agricultural sector, a lot of our people will really lose their livelihoods. We are living in a time where we are causing all these changes and our children will come into the world. They have to live with the consequence of it. So the least that we can do as responsible parents or as responsible adults is to try and, and minimise this unnecessary burden on them. All over the world, entire habitats have been destroyed and thousands of people killed through severe climate catastrophes. Over time, it will get worse. It is easy for us to feel too small, too helpless to make any difference to these devastating phenomena. So we often choose to turn a blind eye to the warning signs. But there is hope. 
we can all take small personal steps and it can make a difference. And one of the things that we talk about is this concept called the ASI, Avoid, Shift and Improve. So this is what we can think about every day as we go about our daily life. What can we avoid doing that can be better for the climate? When you think about it in small bite-sized pieces like this, you can actually build up to something bigger and it will become part of your habits and your natural lifestyle. Why I say volunteerism is important. You are making something that looks abnormal to general public normal. We go and clean up public spaces and people look at it as a weird thing. And when more people know that it's normal to do that instead of what they think as not normal before, then eventually the society will start to change. That's why one of the most important elements of combating climate change, aside from science or even governance, is us. And it starts one small step at a time. Another powerful tool for driving change is open journalism and free media without which we may not have been able to stop large-scale activities that would have caused serious, irreversible harm to our environment. So, of course, there I think everything is put in place. That was a long fight, as I understand. Uh, it took several years, 15 or 16 years, to get the status. It's not protection itself, because protection itself is, is very similar around the world, but actually involvement of the local communities, giving them a pride being a guardians of their own territories. So I think what's most important is to test through concrete projects, because at the end of the day, what really matters is when the concrete projects are implemented. And local communities, politicians, they see that those money being used to one or the other purpose, and uh, those purposes were reached. So I think very good example is Saba project, which EU is also working on conservation efforts involving local community, employing them, even training them. So I think this is one of those concrete projects which of course work well. So what Climate Governance Malaysia does is that we reach out to boards of directors who are long-term stewards of their organisation to remind them of their legal duties and responsibilities to promote the resilience and sustainability of the business. It is our responsibility to ensure climate literacy, to identify, manage and mitigate climate risks, and also to seize opportunities that will arise in this existential crisis. The European Union is a significant, if not the most influential thought leader in this space. They take their responsibilities and commitments very seriously. They do not want to be accused of outsourcing their carbon footprint to countries which have little or no climate ambition. They do not want to be accused of outsourcing their environmental destruction. And as we have now know, a recent decision, they do not want to be accused of outsourcing deforestation as well. So Climate Governance Malaysia has collaborated with them on many occasions. And the latest was a hybrid webinar, EU-Malaysian Dialogue, Fighting climate change with market mechanisms. A single person may not be able to make a huge difference, but we are able to do this together, and little changes as a whole will make a significant difference. The Earth is everyone's home, and we can keep it safe, comfortable and beautiful for us and for future generations when we play our part. We came into a world that was better than now and during our lifetime, we have made it worse. So we don't want to leave that legacy when we go.